Hi, it's Dre Griggs with Obsidian Wisdom. Today, we answer the question, how long will $100,000 last in retirement? When it comes to retirement, you and I both know that we want to be able to retire once and we want to retire once and for all. Uh, but we don't know if we have enough money to retire. Now, more times than not, there's a lot of simple ways, a lot of fancy ways to be able to calculate how much money you need in retirement. Some people will say, look, take whatever your income is, you multiply that by, I don't know, 10, and then that's about how much money that you should have. There are some people who will say, well, I'm only going to live off of 80% of my income because I paid off all the debt. Or I'm going to downsize. And so I don't need as much of my income as I had at one point in time. And if that's the case, you can take a lower number, multiply that by 10, just as a way to get a starting position. So if you make $100,000 a year and you multiply that by 10, then that would mean you'd want a million dollars. Now, granted, that doesn't mean that a million dollars is good. On average, I think they say that most people want to have around like $1.7 million. That's kind of what I think the last uh, number I read in the survey was was showing about $1.7 million is going to be good for most people. And then you add their Social Security and different things inside of it. But for some, that's going to be a number that you can't achieve. It's going to be too much to ask based on when you started or different situations. Most of us, if we have families, then we're devoting money towards some of those, helping them and creating experiences for them. And so maybe we just have the $100,000. And so we're saying, you know what, what will $100,000 do for me? If you are getting Social Security, and I think on average it says Social Security check is about $2,500 a month. That's what it is on average. You can get as high as $4,000 if you have a certain number of credits and you don't touch the money until you fully retire, which is which I think is at 70 this year. Then you may say, all right, I have some other options available to where I'm getting $4,000 a month from Social Security. And then I'm able to use that $100,000 in a different way. For others, if they have to rely on that $100,000 that they have, one of the choices becomes, what am I doing with that money? How am I investing that money? Am I getting a 2% return on however it's invested? Or am I getting a 22% return on however it's invested? If you're getting a 22% return, then you're able to spend up to you know $20,000 every single year, and it doesn't impact the money that you have. Uh, but if you only get 2%, then you can only spend $2,000 without it impacting the actual uh, principal, the balance that you have set aside. As a result, you may say $22,000 plus my social security, if I put those together without any debt, I can live off of that and I will be able to have a pretty good retirement. For others of you, if it's on the $2,000 end and you have debt, well then you can't live off of that. And so you just have to decide how you want to do it. If you're going to live off of 5% is, you know, basically on average, because most people, they, they can't be going for the home runs later in retirement because you don't have the time to make back those losses. So if you have, let's say a 5% return, that's $5,000 a year, which comes up roughly to maybe like $450 a month, somewhere around there. You know, that's going to be difficult for anyone to be able to live off of and maintain. If you are in a position where you can work an additional couple years, then it may be in your best interest to put that money in some other investment venture. So I've known people who said, you know, I got $100,000. I'm going to go and look for a successful business. So we've gone on like business brokerage websites. And then you just find a business that's been in, in business, is generating certain revenue each year. Uh, when you talk to them and you obviously find a business that's like $100,000 or lower. And then when you talk to them, you ask these specific questions. How much money do you take home every single month from your business? And, and obviously you have the broker with you to help you, but you need to know how much they're taking home because you're going to be putting this money away for uh, your retirement income. The second question that you want to ask them is how much time do you put into the business every single week? Are you an active owner where you have to show up and work eight hours, 10 hours, 12 hours every single day? Or are you a passive owner and you just get the check in the mail and you have a manager that handles everything for you and this manager is staying, right? You need to know how much time you have to allocate and how much money it's supposed to make you. Now, again, you can have the broker with you. You can ask a, a trusted financial planner to look over the documents and get back to you. And if it is doable for you to where it's passive or it's something that you're very passionate about, so you don't mind working in it, like it's almost like your hobby, except you happen to be getting paid for it, which is a perfect situation, uh, just to let you know. But if that is your situation, then great. 
If you're someone who is interested in continuing to work because you're like, you know what, I like the interactions, I like meeting people, I like to do things, and this works for you where you're going to meet people and interact and get paid, great, then do that. If you wanted something that's passive because you don't want to think about it, you just want money to come in, then you can do that as well. If you're able to allocate a portion of your money towards buying an already existing successful business, then you're able to now put some of the money away and as to pay for your living to where you're able to do these things. And then if you do a good job to where you grow the business, then when you sell the business in maybe let's say five more years, whatever the multiple increase you had, well, now you may have that million dollars that you were looking for to where you took the hundred thousand dollars, you bought a business, you grew the business, and then you sell most businesses a multiple of the revenue it generates each year. And now you're in a much better position. And if you like it and everything's working well, maybe you keep staying, maybe you stay in the business, maybe you keep running it, bring some of the kids in, make it a family business to where you spend time with your family and you all have a great time together. You have these options available. Now for others, they may take $100,000 and they may stick it inside of a lump sum annuity where you have an annuity income, you give them $100,000, you don't touch the money for a certain amount of time and then they give you a check for the rest of your life and then you're able to say, okay, at least I have this check and then I have my social security check. You put those two checks together and I'm going to make some some adjustments. And maybe I work part time in a business. Maybe I don't have to work at all, just depending on how the numbers work out. You can decide from there as well on that. You also have the option of purchasing real estate. If you took $100,000, let's let's assume you have good credit and let's assume that whatever the property that you purchase is going to be about 20% of it, then you have the ability to buy a pretty nice size house with a, a portion of $100,000. To where if it's a 20% down payment and like 2% closing cost, so let's say you allocated $75,000 of the $100,000 towards buying a, a pretty nice house. The $25,000 you leave for the maintenance of the house, maybe you have to get uh, floors redone or, or carpet redone or however, however that looks or an AC replaced or water heater replaced, whatever that looks like. And then once you do that, you rent the property out. And now you've taken the hundred thousand dollars and you're going to get two to four thousand dollars every single month in rental income. You also have the twenty five thousand to help hold you over in case you don't get a tenant right away. And then the house isn't isn't really being lived in. So now you're just paying the expenses, but you don't have anything else to show for it. You have that flexibility, and that option as well. I guess what I'm really saying is. You have two choices. One is you you live off of that. The money is invested, and then depending on the return, you're able to decide a certain amount of money that you have, um, or you can invest the money. You either invest it in yourself, learning a skill. You invest it in a already successful business because we don't have we don't have time to be investing in businesses that aren't working. We're we're not we're not going on a Shark Tank. We're not trying to find the next big thing. We want to find an already big thing. Um, so you find the already big thing, you put the money inside of there, and then you continue running that business depending on the time and the revenue that that business generates for you each month. Now, there are some businesses out there where the people are able to generate a really nice revenue and it's able to turn that $100,000 and it's able to flip that into a significant monthly income. Or you, you buy a rental property and then you rent it out, buy like a duplex or something kind of nice, and then you have multiple people that are renting it out. Um, I knew someone that had purchased some land on, right on the beach and they kind of worked it into a summer vacation rental place. They worked it into this place where people had like weddings and stuff like they had built it for weddings. And as a result, people spend thousands of dollars for weddings. There are so many industries where people spend their money unreasonably, um, you know, like babies, pets. Weddings, these are things that people are not trying to be reasonable when they spend their money. So if you were able to enter some of these industries, then you have a chance to flip that money into something much larger for yourself. But as far as if you just wanted to straight up live off of the money, it really comes down to what is the return that you're getting on that money. It's definitely possible for you to put a plan together that is going to generate the revenue that you need. If you found value in this video, I invite you to like and subscribe so you can continue receiving important financial information on ways to generate multiple streams of income so you can stop worrying about money and start spending more time and creating wonderful experiences with your family.